Father, in Jesus' name, we praise and thank you for your faithfulness, first of all, Father. The fact that we're able to be in the presence of you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Father, the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you met us here. You were waiting on us. For that, we are grateful, Father. And Father, we thank you that in the name of Jesus, that you gave us physical strength, spiritual strength, mental health and wellness to be able to partake of the service for our hearts to be right one towards another and right towards you. We ask for your anointing and presence upon the service and upon each person who comes in, Father. And Father, we thank you that in the name of Jesus there would not be a need that anyone has that would not be met, and there would not be any shame or embarrassment for people to express what those needs are. And then, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that in every way that we need to be blessed, you have those blessings for us. And I thank you those who came with financial needs, that their faith would be stimulated by the word of God. And we just thank you, Father, that even as we heard last Sunday, 90% are tithers, but we're believing for 100%, Father, because your word says that money answereth all things, and we just thank you for that. We thank you, Father, there will be no accidents of those who are yet on their way or as we leave. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The scripture reading this morning is from Psalms 34. I'm going to read verses 7 to 10. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. Verse 8, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. And verse 10, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen. Down at the cross. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Singing glory to his name. Glory to his name. Precious name. Glory. cross down at the cross where my savior died down where from cleansing from sin i cried there to my heart was the blood applied singing glory to his name glory to his name precious name Glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood applied, singing glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin, Jesus so sweetly abides within. Cross where he took me in, singing glory to his name. Glory to his name, precious name. Glory to his name. There at the cross where the blood applied. Glory to his name, glory to his name, precious name, glory to his name, there to my heart.
Lord was the blood applied, singing glory to his name. Come to the fountain so rich and sweet, cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete, singing glory to Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. There to my heart was the blood applied. And I thank God for the blood. I thank God for the blood. came streaming down for me it was the blood that made the difference at Calvary I thank God for the blood I thank God for the blood that came streaming down for me it was the blood that made the difference at Calvary I thank God I God for the blood that came streaming down for me it was the blood that made the difference at Calvary lift your hands to the Lord Thanking for, for the blood. Thank God for the blood that came streaming down for me. It was the blood that made the difference at Calvary. One more time. I thank God for the blood that came streaming down for me. It was Jesus' blood that made the difference at Calvary. For 
the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood that made the difference. Thank you for the blood. Friends, thank you for the blood that made the difference at Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 the blood made the difference at Calvary. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. <laughs> that you. Um, I, I just come to give the, um, the announcements for today. And these are the Los Angeles Shabbat Four Square Church announcements. Hebrews 10, 25 says, This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together, as some has for have formed the habit of doing. In fact, we should come together even more frequently. And um, the pandemic is an excuse that we use not to get together. So, but the Bible says, if we're going to stand on the word, it says that it's not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together. So we invite all members and friends of the Los Angeles Shabbat Church to come together and participate in the following weekly phone conferences, conference meetings for 2023. Prayer every Monday to Friday from 10 to 11. But we should, we should pray always, not just from 10 to 11. Uh, and stir, if you desire to learn more about the gifts and manifestations of the Holy Spirit and how to operate in those gifts, please join us for stir. Stir is taught by Pastor Johnson every Monday from 3.30 to 5 p.m. Reading and homework assignments are mandatory. Please see Ernestine Etter or for more information or one of the church leaders. Uh, Tuesday Forgiveness Clinic from 11 a.m. to 12.30 um, Tuesday evening, 6.30 to 7, evening prayer, 6.30 to 7 p.m. Men Talk meets the first and second Tuesday of the month from 7 to 8 p.m. Men Talk is for? Men Okay, all right. Well, you know we got some good actresses up in here. You know, they know how to sound like a man. <laughs> okay. Goal setting on Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. In goal setting, we come together to share long-term and short-term goals and receive encouragement and prayer to carry them out. Comforted is a support group for people who have lost a loved one. The, lo the loss can be recent or in the past. Comforted meets every other Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. The future meeting dates are February 9th uh, and the 23rd and March 9th and the 23rd. We invite you to visit our church website at lasfc.org where all of this information, including phone numbers and access codes, are listed on the first page and under announcements. In an effort to ensure the safety of those who assemble in the sanctuary, we are asking for your cooperation with the following guidelines. If you have tested positive for COVID and are waiting on test results, please stay yourself at home. If you have symptoms such as fever, chills, cough, difficulty breathing, body aches, headache, or congestion, please remain at home and get tested and possibly go see your physician. 
N95 masks are now required to enter the sanctuary. You may bring your own, but cloth masks are no longer acceptable. You must fit, keep your mask on during the entire service. Please, and I know this is the hard one here, do not touch, hug, or shake hands with anyone. Do not congregate in the aisles or anywhere inside the church after service. Please follow the usher's directions and exit immediately. And like uh, we like to say, when you exit, you don't have to go home. But you got to get out of here. Okay. And uh, we need to be aware of uh, what's going on in this world today, and we need to be ready. That's why we need to come together. That's why we need to pray unceasingly. We need to be ready because when Christ comes, guess how he's going to come? I don't know, but, but, but I would think uh, the kind of car he drive would be a Chrysler, right? Okay. And, 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 and we do have a play coming up, uh, the Lord's Supper, and with the disciples, you know. And so we like to, I'd like you to know that if the disciples came back to kind of car, they would have, would be a Honda because we all want to be in accord. Do we have any first-time visitors out there today? Please, just one. One? Second-time visitors. 25th time. 347, no. <laughs> uh, that's just because I'm selfish and I want to play that song. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. And the church council extends a sincere thank you to everyone who attended the business meeting on Sunday, January 29th. 2023, your feedback and questions are very helpful for the functioning and growth of the ministry. If you have any questions or ministry concerns you would like the council uh, to address, please write them legibly or type them on a sheet of paper. Please include your name and contact information. Put it in an envelope and hand it to one of the council members. The council only meets once a month, so will respond as soon as we can. And we thank you for that. And do, do we have any birthdays? We know Lieda. Be, it should be more of us in here celebrating every day like a birthday. <laughs> or like it's Christmas. Okay, any birthdays? No birthdays? Yes. Every single day we have so much to thank God for. The first, when you are conscious and you go... <sighs> You should drop on your knees, start praising them right then and there. If you're not in any pain, if you got a roof, if you got a little bit of money in the bank, you know, if your children are healthy, if you're healthy, that is a reason to, sell, to jump up and down and celebrate God. It's a reason to smile, you know. It's not the problems you have, it's how you deal with them. But if you put God in your life and you put Christ first, you'll know how to deal with them. Then walking around like this. Woe is me and want sympathy. So thank you, thank you, saints. I, I, I know I'm saying a bit much, but I just was led to because I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful every single day. I might clean up. I might wash my hands, take a shower, whatever. But after that, before I can do anything, I have to drop to my knees and I have to thank God. Thank God for what I have, for what he's given me, for what he's taken away from me, for what he's left me. Because the things that I desire and would pray for as a young man would have killed me. But God knew better. And that's why I'm still here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Praise God for who he is in our lives and the things that he has done and the things that he's doing. Uh, as most of you know, we have been studying on forgiveness. And we have a forgiveness class every Tuesday from 11 to 12.30, led by um, our own Patricia Stanford. And it is an amazing experience to, to study total forgiveness because some of us have experienced partial forgiveness. I forgive you a little bit, you know, as long as, you, as, long as I think we cool. You know, I forgive you, I forgive you a little bit until something reminds me of who you are and what you're doing, but God wants us to have total forgiveness. Total forgiveness, that's everything. And so because of that, I want to share with you my forgiveness journey for two things. One for my granddaughter, 
who I haven't spoken to in four years, and now I have a great grandson who I haven't even spoken to, and because of my mother. And my desire is to be intentional to forgive totally, which is God's greatest challenge and my greatest achievement. Because of our um, forgiveness class, to forgive or not to forgive, I've come such a long way. And I want to share with you some of the things that I discovered on this journey. Yeah. One of the first things I discovered was the things not what, what total forgiveness is not. Amen? We often think about what total forgiveness is, but what it's not. And what I found it for myself in, in this journey is that it's better for me sometimes to know what not to do than what to do. It's, it's easier for me to stay away from what not to do than to do, than to do it and find out I, I didn't need to do that. It was the wrong thing. So what total forgiveness is not? I'm going to share a few, a few of those things with you. Approval of what they did. Just as God forgives people without approving of their sin, we must also learn that forgiving people does not imply an endorsement of their evil deeds. Amen? Yeah. So approve of what they did. I don't approve what my granddaughter did. It hurts me to my heart. And sometimes when I think about what she's done, you know, and, and how many years, now it's gone on five years, you know, I, it pains me to my heart. And when I think about what my mother, how my mother is right now, my mother has passed away. But she, but she had, we had a situation where she, um, I wanted to go to a special high school to become a judge. I wanted to be a judge. And I wanted to go to this school. And my mother told me I was too stupid, that I wouldn't pass the test. And that spiraled me down to my education and to my social experiences in life. Because I felt that I wasn't, I wasn't worthy, I wasn't capable. And if my own mother said to me that I was stupid, then who am I to say? And I knew Jesus. I went to Sunday school. I went to church. I knew him as my personal Lord and Savior. But this journey with Jesus and forgiveness now has taken me to a new place. So I don't approve of what they did. And what God has given me now is the understanding of what they've done. Number two, excusing what they did. You no, know, it's so easy to, to excuse what they did and, and point the blame at ourselves. I know for myself, I tried to excuse my granddaughter and thought it was my fault because I let her and her boyfriend live in my house for me and they wasn't married. So I tried to make an excuse for that, but that wasn't an excuse. That was total disrespect. And so when I came to the conclusion of not excusing what they did, I had to take responsibility for my own actions and what I did. So on that particular journey, I had to first I had to first go to God and ask for his forgiveness for me allowing my granddaughter and her boyfriend to live together in my house and not be married. And once I got that from him, then the forgiveness journey continued. Come on, come on. Justifying what they did. Oh, they must have did that because I gave them the wrong look, you know, or I said something to them that they didn't like, or I checked them on an action, I checked them on a word. So that would give me to justify what they did, but there's no justification for sin. No. There's no justification for unforgiveness because God has given us a roadmap. Two scriptures I want to share with you that help me. One, Luke 23, 34. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And that's the one I'm leaning on now. That's the one I really, that's, I, I've grabbed hold to that, that they don't know what they're doing. Sometimes they do, and sometimes what they do is on purpose. But I, I have elected to choose they do not what they do to the extent that they've done it. The other one is Matthew 6, 14. For if we forgive men their for trespasses, my heavenly Father will also forgive me. That's kind of selfish. I don't, want, I don't want to pay the price for the things that I've done. My acts of unforgiveness, my acts of disobedience, I don't want to have to pay for that. So I'm going to rightly right now Ex, 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 extend to them my, my, my love and my, my passion and my prayers for them because I don't want that. I don't want to justify them. Pardon, pardoning what they did. A pardon is a legal transaction that releases an offender from the consequences of their action, such as a penalty or a sentence. Sometimes we want to pardon them. Oh, they, you know, feel sorry for them. We take on a, a motive feeling sorry for them, that they, they, they're going through a whole lot in their life, you know, and they're having challenges, so I'm just going to let that slide. No, we can't let that do. 
We have to own up to our responsibilities, and we have to allow them to own up to their responsibilities so they can be free and we can be free. We don't want to be held in bondage. You know, one of the things that we talked about is when, is when people do things to us, sometimes we take it so personal that we don't allow God an opportunity to mend our hearts and give us directions and give us strength. Next I want to talk about is denying what they did. How many times have you denied what they did for whatever reason? How many times I've denied what they've done? Sometimes because of pride. You know, with my granddaughter, I denied what she did because I didn't want everybody to think that I wasn't a good grandmother, that I didn't do what I needed to do for them, so I'm just going to deny what she did and suck it up. You know what I'm saying? And handle that myself, you know, but it didn't work until I released that, until I released that, then I was able to move on. But you can't deny what somebody's done. For one, one thing is that if you deny what they've done, you allow them an opportunity to do it again. Yeah. So everybody has to own up to what their responsibilities are. Right. Amen? Yeah. Forgetting. Forgetting. Now, I'm talking about what total forgiveness is not. Total forgiveness is, is not forgetting. They are equating truth. Total true forgiveness with wiping the memory of the event from their minds, but literally to forget may not be realistic. I don't want to forget. I want to be healed. I don't want to push that down. How many times have we had, we had situations and people in our lives and we stuff stuff down? Hurts and the angers, frustration, disappointments. We stuff that stuff down. And what happens when it's stuffed down? What happens? This is interactive. What happens when it's stuffed down? It comes back up again. And sometimes it comes back up with a fierceness. Yeah. So we have to know not to forget what they did. We can forgive what they did and ask God to give us the grace and the aptitude and the courage to accept, it, to accept their forgiveness. In Jesus' name, yeah. refusing to take the wrong ser seriously. Oh, they didn't mean that. They, they didn't mean that. I'm not going to take what you did seriously. I'm just going to give you the benefit of the doubt and go on. That's like denying what happened. It, you had the same results. So we can't forget, we can't refuse what they did. We, ha we have to get to a place in our forgiveness journey that we ask, when we go to people, we ask them for forgiveness. With my granddaughter, she has blocked me on social media, blocked me on the phones, not answering no calls. So what happens with me? I'm not refusing to take this seriously because those are acts that, that you consciously do. You have to go on your phone and block me. Yeah. You know, you have to, you have to be, defriend me on social media. That's not something you do as an afterthought. This is what you're actually doing. And so what I have to do with her is that I, I send her text messages anyway. If she don't read them, she don't get them, at least I'm doing something to let her know that I'm, that I'm still praying for her. I still love you, and I disagree with how you're treating me but, and, and not letting me see my grandson. But I'm holding on to the faith of God that reconciliation is what's going to happen. And reconciliation takes two people. You know what I'm saying? So with that reconciliation, I'm believing God for reconciliation for myself and my granddaughter so I can see my great-grandson. Amen? Amen? Pretending we are not hurt. I'm, a, I'm a pre pretending we are not hurt. How many of you have done that? Pretend I'm not hurt. It is ridiculous to think that we should have to keep a stiff upper lip but we have been injured by spouses, infidelity, or betrayed, or molested, or unjustly criticized, pretending we are not hurt. What does that do to you? What does that do to you? When you pretend you're not hurt, for me, it makes me, it makes me hurt even the more because I'm not acknowledging the pain, and I'm not giving God an opportunity to erase the pain to make it right so that I can walk in the place of forgiveness. Amen? So those are the things that we, what total forgiveness is not. So I don't want to just leave us there and what not to do. But what total forgiveness is, amen? amen? Being aware of what someone has done and still forgiving them. That's a big one. That's a big one. I don't know about anybody. That's a big one for me, accepting that my, my granddaughter has done and still forgiving them. My mother, when she said, my mother has gone home to be with the Lord. It wasn't until about four years ago, we went to a conference for Living Waters, and we were in small groups, and we were talking about, about different incidents and challenges and issues. 
and the Holy Spirit dropped on me. They said, what have you held on to? Holy Spirit dropped on me my mother. That blew me out the water because I love my mother to life. You know, I couldn't think about anything about hurting, about having any ought against her. And then when it came back because she told me I was stupid, that I had not really released that. So that was the beginning of me realizing that my mother had said something, and I used that scripture in Luke, forgive them for they know not what they do. My mother didn't know that the words she speak were curses. She didn't know that would follow me down the line of my life and would change my life. And it wasn't until then that I came to a place where I had to forgive her. And because she's gone on to be with the Lord, there's no conversation, there's no reconciliation. But what I did do was I wrote her a letter. And I wrote down all my feelings, all my emotions, and I asked her to forgive me in that letter for not being the child she thought I should be and raised in the hell, you know, which would make her think that I was stupid because I was acting crazy. But I thank God that I wrote that letter to her and I asked her to forgive me. There was a weight lifted off my shoulder. Hallelujah. I thank God. You know, what happened is I got refocused in the living. I didn't stay focused on the dead. I stay focused on the living and the life that she gave me. She loved me. She cared for me. But she didn't understand me. I didn't understand myself. How could I expect my mother or anybody else to understand me when I didn't understand myself? But now I'm walking in a place of understanding of who I am. And this forgiveness class has really opened the door because in that class what we do is we allow everybody the opportunity to express an experience that they have. And there's no judgment, there's no criticism, and we encourage anybody to, to cut loose, to get loose, get that guck out of you, get rid of that huckabuck, get all that stuff out of you so that you can move forward in freedom. Next, choosing to keep no record of wrong. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Can't keep no record, Pastor. <laughs> On January 1st, you took my seat in church. Yeah, you can have that seat, but I ain't going to forgive you. I'm going to keep a record of that. De December 25th, I gave you a Christmas present and you didn't give me one. I'm going to remember that after all the things I do for you. And even on Christmas, you can't even give me a Christmas present. Choosing to keep no record of wrong. Love keeps no record of wrong. 1 Corinthians 13, 5. We can't keep a record of wrong and expect to grow. That's like, you know, like, like, that's like having to keep a record of wrong. It's like having a, a root of bitterness in you. And when that root grows inside of you, it permeates your whole body, your thinking, your emotions. Even how you receive God, that root of bitterness affects how you receive God. So we have, to, we have to immediately, I'm using Rick's word now, we have to default to forgive. It can't be something we think about to do. It has to be a default. It has to happen immediately. Like we choose to love God. We choose to love God immediately. We don't think about loving God or how we're going to serve him. But we do. We default to love God. And he wants us to default for forgiveness. When we default for forgiveness, that's going to automatically happen. Now it's not going to happen overnight all the time. It's, it, it's like an onion. It peels a little bit at a time. And forgiveness is a process. And we have to realize it's a process. We think sometimes it's a microwave duty. It's not going to happen that way because we have to look within ourselves. We have to check our own selves, check our own motives. And once we do that, then we can, we can let go of that record of doing wrong because, listen, Lois T. Brooks. On September 4th, I saw you in the bed with a man. You wouldn't marry to him. Then on February 5th, I saw you in the bed with another man, and you wouldn't marry to him. Can you imagine God keeping the record of all that stuff? How could we live? What could we do? We couldn't do anything. If God kept, listen, all of you, just take a moment. Think about that. If God kept a record of just one thing you did yesterday, this morning, never mind what you did five years ago, 
what you did today, what you did this morning. What if God kept a record of what you did? We wouldn't be sitting up in this church today praising God. We, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm going to do a fat is. I'd be dropping my head in shame, couldn't hold my head up, couldn't get a job, because something always going to remind you of the things that you did. And that's the blessing of forgiveness. When you get into forgiveness, those things, those memories might come up, but God will give you an automatic default, and he'll show you his grace and his mercy and his love. He'll tell you about 1 Corinthians 13, about that love chapter, and how we have to apply that chapter to our life every single day just not in forgiveness and forgiving ourselves. You know, sometimes we have all against ourselves and we are hard as credit. We don't want to forgive ourselves. Well, I, wasn't, I didn't have a good marriage because I didn't know how to forgive him or treat him right. You know, my child is acting up because I didn't discipline them right. Those are all things that we hold ourselves accountable for, but you can't do what you don't know. And when you get to a place of information and knowledge, then you know what to do and then God gives you the equipment to do what you need to do so that we can stay on top. Amen. Refusing to punish. What total forgiveness is. Refusing to punish. Oh. See, ooh, ooh, that was a good one for me. I had plotted in my mind what I was going to do to my granddaughter. I had a scenario what I was going to do to her. You know, and I wasn't saved all my life. I still got some hookups in the street. So consequently, I know what to do. <laughs> Refusing to punish. <laughs> Refusing to punish. That's what total forgiveness is, is refusing to punish. Amen. That's like not having any memories of what's going on. Choosing not to punish. Amen. And you know what? When I, when I got to that place right there and chose not to punish, I had a good night's sleep. I didn't have no nightmares. I didn't have no demons speaking in my head, jumping around, giving me ways to do what I need to do to get rid of her, get back at her. I didn't have that, you know? And then along with that refusing to punish, I was angry, oh my goodness. I was so angry with her, I was angry with my mother too. And I wanted to punish my mother, but she's gone. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say good things about her and, and people speaking of her. I wouldn't say good things about her, I would just say, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't, now today I can say she was, a, she was an amazing mother, a wonderful woman. She loved Jesus. She loved to serve and help people. So that let me go. But my granddaughter, I give God praise because I'm still on that journey. I'm still on that journey. She had, she, she had a second child named Gabriel, and Gabriel was born with some deformities, so they elected to terminate the pregnancy. It hurt me to my heart. I wanted to punish her for not reaching out to me so I could pray with her and see what God was going to do because God is a miracle working God. He can take what the doctor said and make the doctor a lie and make the doctor believe that Jesus Christ is real and that he's a miracle worker and that he still heals today. So I was really hurt and angry about that and God had to talk with me too. That wasn't my choice. That wasn't my choice. I just had to pray, continue to pray for her and pray that they would get over that situation. Amen? Amen. This is a good one. Not telling what they did. Uh -oh. Girlfriend, let me tell you. You know Mary Jane, girl, I saw her the other night, you know, I saw her the other night, and she saw me and she started talking bad to me, and I had to, I had to, I had to say, oh my God, I can't do that, I can't do that. I can't do that. And so she, was, she, she came to me and told me that she saw, that I saw her. And so I had to forgive her for coming to me and, and not to tell nobody else. We don't, want to keep, we don't want to keep perpetuating that hurt and that pain because it keeps it alive. We want that thing to be dead and buried and stinking in the grave, amen? We don't want to have to keep remembering those things. So God is giving us strength now and he's giving us power now to do that. And then being, being merciful to God, being merciful to, to those people, being merciful to yourself is very important. One of the things I want to also share with our, with, our, with our forgiveness is that when we go through these things, we all experience some of the same things but different ways. 
We've all had the same experience, the same challenges, but God is faithful to forgive us of the challenges that we've gone through once we repent. One of the things I wanted, Matthew 6, 14 and 15, I like that. If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. If you don't want to do it for the other person, do it for you. If you, if, you, if you want to hold on to that for, your, for, for them, do it for yourself. Amen. We need to covet that. We need to hold on to that. Because we got children and grandchildren and great-grands, and we don't want the sins that we do fall back on them. You know what I mean? We don't want that to happen, so we have to let them go. And also, in, in, in forgiveness, we need to default and do it immediately. Sometimes we can't, we can't forgive them. We can't forgive them at that moment. But purpose in your heart that you're going to, and God will give you the steps to do that, to walk in that forgiveness. Amen. Yeah. One scripture says, "Do not let the sun go down in your wrath." Yeah. Amen. Amen. Tomorrow is not promised to us. No, right. And if we have, if somebody has ought us, or we have ought somebody else, and we didn't go through the process of forgiveness, you might never have a chance. Yeah. Right. Then how are we going to live? With that, how do you live with the fact that you had an opportunity to ask somebody for forgiveness and you didn't? Or you had an opportunity to forgive somebody and you didn't? Think about that. We don't want that on our conscience. We don't want to pass that down in Jesus' name. So I just want to say that one of the things that we have to also realize with Jesus and what he says in this word, which is I like this. Total forgiveness is a choice, not freely, at least at first, but rather an act of faith. Amen? Amen. It's a choice that we have to do. Yes. You, you can't grandfather into forgiveness. You, hello? You can't grandfather into forgiveness. This is a choice that we have to make. And in closing, I just want to remind us of Matthew 5, To break it down, love, bless, do good, and pray to love them unconditionally, no matter what they've done, because Jesus loves us unconditionally. With all the things that we've done and said, he loves us unconditionally. Bless, don't just say it by words, but see what you can do to bless that person. Do they need some groceries? Do they need to go to the doctor? Or they just need a kind word? Bless that person from the bottom of your heart, amen? amen. Then do good, amen. do good, don't do evil, do good. Do whatever you can to let that person know that Jesus loves them and that you forgive them, and then pray. Pray unceasingly, pray. And as we pray, God will begin to re reveal to us things that we need to let go of and let God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. I, give, I stand to give you God, give God the praise. Because there was a time when people would ask me to speak that I would get physically ill and have to go to the hospital. Amen. I'd be physically ill, I'd have to stay in the bed, I couldn't move. When they wanted me to minister. I've had opportunities to minister across the country, but that fear of ministering, you know, gripped me. And then not only the fear, but I wasn't in a place, I didn't have a place where people supported me. I have two pastors that support me that encourage me in the gifts and giftings, that give me an opportunity to make a mistake and not judge me on that mistake, but encourage me and give me constructive criticism so that the more I do it, the better I get, the better ambassador I'll be, the better handmaiden I'll be. I'll be all that God wants me to be because it's like, don't take this church for granted. The teaching that's going on in this church is, is irreplaceable. You can't get nowhere and get what you get in this church for f almost free. You can't do it. And the thing is, if you take your lessons in this church and you take them to heart and stop walking around in pride, I know better, I've been in church 30 years, this, that, the other. If you let God be God, let God be God in your life, and he will show you the way to walk in, and therein you walk, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. I stand witness because when Lois first came into the group for current um, 
for uh, Living Waters aspect, and I had the privilege and the delight to be a group leader with her, and I asked her to uh, co-share with me in leadership, and she was quite timid, and she said, but I'll try. Look what God has done. The word of the Lord, I believe I had an impression as she was preaching. I took and burned in my heart was, Lord, I thank you for the default. Like we have in a printer, you have your default, the default to the printer to print something out, the default of forgiveness. I'm going to take that home with me. But the word of the Lord, I believe, is the Lord said, expect after hearing the word of the Lord. Now faith is. Your now faith is that God will default to you any hidden submerged, suppressed memories to be released that may be hindering prayers, hindering healing that you may not be aware of. He says that he will ha use the Holy Spirit to bring all things to your remembrance and that he also deals with in bringing those things to remembrance, that as you expect the Holy Spirit, and I'm just lifting my hand right now and say, Lord, I have an expectation that anything hidden, anything, Father, that's in residue, you may want to join me, anything in, in Father that what you will take the spirit of the Holy Spirit and his character, his attributes and his job, Father, to reveal those things hidden, all things hidden be revealed unto me that may be preventing me for total forgiveness. We thank you for the healing of memories that have been submerged, suppressed in the name of Jesus. We take authority over the enemy, keeping those from us, Father, because many of them have constituted and manifested in our bodies arthritis, etc. Bitterness is to the bone, says the word. And the Holy Spirit says, right now in this opportunity, he says, have an expectation that I will have a visitation to you because you desire it. But you have to speak it, Lord, I desire the inspection of the Holy Spirit. I desire that all things hidden in me be revealed. I give it to you freely. And having taught this word and sat under this word, the responsibility is ours to be a doer and not only a healer of the word. And the Holy Spirit says that as God says to you, and he said and approached you in your unforgiveness and in your sin, the Holy Spirit said that the word of God says, God himself said, can we reason together that though your sins be crimson, I will make them white as snow. He approaches you when you're distanced from him. How can we not approach those? Speak, God is speaking today like he's never spoken before. And lastly, I heard the Holy Spirit say the pandemic is not COVID, it's unforgiveness and unconfessed sin, saith the Lord. <laughs> 